Hey there folks, this is Tornado Twins, at least one of them. And can you believe it? It's already time for part 12. I feel like we started just yesterday with this tutorial series. Anyways, we've spent a couple of weeks now trying to get our turret to work. And um, it's looking pretty good. He's turning around, he's shooting. and But nothing much exciting happens with our worm because when he gets hit, nothing really happens. And when our worm hits the turret, nothing happens either. So what we need right now at this stage in game design, we need a lives system or a health system. Now, there's a couple ways for a worm to get hurt at this point. It's not only the turret shooting at him, of course, that is one way to die. But also when our worm falls off the platform, he keeps falling and falling and falling and falling forever. And unless if our worms like skydiving in a very boring environment, this game isn't much fun when that happens. So there's two ways to respawn. Now let me tell you the idea for my idea for this game is as follows. The worm consists of three segments so when he gets hit once and immediately dies that's not much fun so what I want to do is he gets hit once and then he loses one of his body parts like the last one and then if he get hit, gets hit again he loses the second part and then there's only one part left and when that gets hit and of course it's a little harder to hit because there's only one part then he loses one life and respawns but of course when he falls off the platform the whole joker needs to respawn because well you know he plunged into his death and there's no way that any of his body parts could have survived now I would like to start with a turret shooting at our worm but it might be a little more complicated when I don't uh, explain things so instead we're going to start with our worm falling off the platform and respawning our worm and then next we'll look at having the same thing happen with our turd but only when he hits the worm for the third time are you ready let's go first thing we need to do is open up our good old move around script As soon as we have that we're going to add a variable and call it dead var dead equals false. Now we set it to false because we don't want our game to start and immediately our worm dies. No, we want it to be alive at first. So also what I'm going to add right in front of the var is type private. And this will ensure that this variable doesn't show up in the editor so nobody can mess with it. It's only a variable that can be used in our script. Okay, next. You already know that the update function is called a couple million times a second because it's called every time the engine renders a frame. Now what we're going to do next, this function is not going to be triggered every single frame. It's going to only be triggered when it actually, our uh, worm is colliding with something. So let's type function and on controller collider hit. And as soon as you spell that right, you'll see that it, the name changes color and this will give us a variable hit now that means basically whenever our function is called we're hitting something then it tells us in a hit variable what we're hitting now this variable is not of the type integer it's not a number it's not a float it's not a transform it's not a vector 3 in fact it's a controller collider hit variable so let's type that column controller collider hit and as soon as you type that right you will see it changes color as well now I totally agree with you that this is a horrible name for a variable definition but hey don't blame me it just comes with unity this way so next we need to check what we are hitting in fact so let's add an if statement and if our hit variable dot game object dot tag equals the name fallout then it means we've have fallen off our platform. Um, now notice that I'm not using game object dot find and then find the name. I'm using a tag here. Now let me explain this real quick. Quick. Let's save the script. Let's um, create a new cube. Game object create other and then cube. Let's look at this from our top view and scale our cube insanely big because this is the cube we will collide with when we fall off the platform in both ways here we go that's pretty pretty big looking already let's look at it from the side and then move it down so that our worm can 
fall a considerable distance before it actually hits it. All right, perfect. Now, if you come over where the name is, we can call it fallout, but also it says a tag. Now, this is uh, very nice because we can actually give the same tag to multiple objects. So let me click this here, and if you're if you, yours does not say fallout yet, you can say add tag, twirl open this little triangle here, and just in an empty element start typing fallout. In my case, it does already say fallout because I tend to use this tag quite a bunch. So I just add this tag right here, and then go back to our script, and then as soon as we hit our fallout collider, we will set dead to true. Okay, let's save this. And uh, the reason I'm setting that to true is because we can, in our main loop, so in our update function, or we might add a late update function. And I'm adding this because a late update function is basically the same as the update function, but it is called after the update. So this way, our collision script does not um, interfere with our moving our collider around script. So here we can check if we are dead. And, if, and again, our late update function is also called a couple hundred times a second. So if we are dead, we're going to set the transform dot position of our worm to a vector of three variable. And I'm just doing this manually. You could also set an empty game object. Let me set this to zero, four, and zero, x, y, and z. Then let's do the same for our camera, um, uh, because our camera needs to be reset as well. So we'll just type game object dot find with a capital F our main camera dot transform dot position position equals vector three. Now remember this is X, Y, and Z, and in the Z axis we want our camera to be ten meters behind. Our character so we'll type minus 10 for that and then set our dead to false again because we already died and now we have been resurrected kind of let's save our script make sure there's no errors run our game let's commit suicide really quick see what happens and boom as you can see we respawn right on top of the turret which gives the turret a little trouble to find us but it works now last but not least you can make this little square invisible by just unchecking the mesh render but then you cannot select it in 3d view anymore you can only select it from the hierarchy window so do take note of that now of course what we have not yet done is subtract a life from our character so in our collision script we can add a little comment and say um, subtract life here as soon as we have our lives displayed on the screen which we will do next alright see you next week